Hey, welcome back everybody. This is Chris from PC Addicts and we're going to be continuing on with our Server Basics video series. This is going to be video number eight. You can find the links down below in the description field for all the other videos if interested. Now, this one's going to be regarding logon scripts. Um, we're just going to kind of touch on this. I'm going to show you a couple different ways, um, an older way that still works great, and then also um, group policy preferences which is actually pretty powerful. So let's get started. What we have here is our domain controller. Now this is my domain controller here at my house. And I also have a virtual machine that I just set up for this purpose. And it's running in uh, VirtualBox here. So you can see um, nothing special, it's just a Windows 7 box. Uh, what we wanna accomplish this time is let's map a drive. Uh, it's pretty basic. Almost every place I've worked have, has mapped drives, so it's a pretty common practice, and uh, uh, for the most part, it's a, it's a fairly simple thing to do. The old way that, or I consider the old way, but still widely used, is by creating a batch script. And well, the way I, I've learned that uh, that works well is, um, first we're going to create a folder somewhere on here that we want to share because we want to map a map a drive. So every time our clients log in, when they go to my computer, they will have a map drive down here, like maybe a network share. Like actually I do here at home. If you look, let me bring this up. I have a map drive called media and that holds all my pictures, music, movies, TV shows, etc. So basically we're going to create the same thing as what I have set up already on my home network, but we're going to do it from scratch here. And uh, so first things first, let's, we have to have a folder that we want to share, right? So let's go ahead and find a spot to put this thing. I'm going to put it here under files and media. Now there's a couple ways of doing this. One is you can right click, create a folder. Uh, maybe you already have a folder set up. Maybe you don't, um, but you do have to configure some permissions and whatnot. But what we're going to do is let's, let's go the new way here we'll go sh into the share and storage management okay here's all the shares I already have set up right now currently and then what I want to do is provision a share we're gonna create this folder and share at the same time and we know where we want it so we can let's just browse to it it's on the R dollar sign um, files media and within media, we want to create a new folder. Let's call it uh, shared docs. All right, so shared docs. We're going to go ahead and hit next. Do you want to change the NTFS permissions? No, I'm, I'm happy with the NTF permissions right now. We may need to tweak them a little bit because I have this network pretty logged down. But let's just start off here with the default settings. All right, we're going to leave that default. Uh, we're gonna leave this default and then here the specify share permissions all users and groups have read read only access which I don't want I want to have administrators have full access and all other users have read only access um, and the reason for this is um, because I don't want people to delete or change the folders. I just want to share out the, the the folder, okay? I mean, you can go in here and tweak this stuff later, but let's just say we want to do that and then hit next and next next. That's if you want to set like um, um, rules and everything as far as quotas. So, all right, so now we have our shared docs folder that should be shared out. Let's see if we can actually see it though. If we go stdc-1 you can see we do have a shared docs folder and we can access that. We, I don't think we could write to it. See, no permissions, but that's okay. I'm not concerned with that. You can tweak permissions later. The main thing is we can see it on the network, it's shared. So we're done in here. Now, the two different ways you can do this, there's actually a lot more, there's more ways than two, but um, the two that I'm familiar with and that's quite popular is, the first one's gonna be a batch script. Okay, so first let's just create a, uh, a batch script. We're gonna go ahead and just we'll just do it here on the on the desktop. We're gonna name this uh, map drives. 
dot bat and delete the dot txt because it's going to be a batch file. Yes, we're okay with that. So now let's go ahead and right click, edit. Now, a very simple way of doing this is just net use, and then you can specify the drive letter you want to be set. Let's call it uh, S for shared. Uh, and then we're going to put the path, the actual shared path. STDC-1 shared docs. That's it. Very basic, and there's some custom stuff you can do. Typically, you may want to do net use and then put this thing and then put the switch delete ahead of this so that way each time it logs in it makes sure that it deletes the drive or all the drives if there's any map still that's another story but this is just going to be a very basic login script so now we can test this out let's actually okay before i go too far you need to store this somewhere we're not going to leave it here on the desktop there's a couple places and um where I like to put them is in the net logon folder because the permissions are already set properly. And the net logon folder is from a client's machine. You can just do the um, domain name. So Southtown backslash net logon. And you can see, you can access this. People have access to um, this folder, the appropriate permissions. So I'm just going to dump it right in here. So where that is located is in the C drive, Windows, it should be syslog, sysvol, and sysvol. Here's your domain, and I want to put it under scripts. So I'm just going to move it right there. Okay, so now we have map drives. So if we come over here, you can see we have access to the file. Let's test it out. Let's make sure that that batch script will run and it will map this drive. So we're going to double click it, and there we go, we got the map drive. That's not what we want. We don't want to have to go into this and double click it each time we log in. So let's go ahead and disconnect it, and I'll show you what's next here. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Let's go ahead and close this. So now we want to create a group policy that that gets uh, a group policy object that gets applied every time a user logs in. So we go to start on the server, administrative tools, and we're going to go to group policy management. Now within here, we're going to go ahead and drill down and you got to find a spot for it. So I'm just going to dump it in the Southtown OU. I want to create a GPO for this domain. We're going to call it map drives and we'll hit OK. So we want to edit this, right click it, edit. Okay, we're going to want to go to users, the because we, um, because we want it to be applied every time the user logs in. So the user, and then Windows setting, well, policy, Windows setting, and scripts. Here's your logon and log off scripts. We're going to go ahead and double click or right click and select properties of this thing. Now within the scripts dialog here, there's something to note. The show files button down here, you can also dump that script in this directory right here, which is sysvol southtown policies. And this is actually like where the group policy stores their login scripts. I don't want to just because I'm used to having it in the net logon and that's just where I wanted it. So I put it in the net logon folder and we're going to go ahead and browse to it. We know where it's stored. It's on the C windows. Um, and you know what? You could also, sysvol, we're going to go to sysvol again, Southtown, scripts. We're just going to go this route. So this is the file. Double click it. Hit OK. So now we're going to hit OK. So basically, every time a computer logs in, which we'll do right here, log off. That script should run. Client one. Let's see if this works. I haven't done any testing before this video, at least here on this setup with all the configurations and permissions, but we'll see what happens. Oops, that's too small. It did not run. So what we want to do is let's do a GP update force. 
this computer is in the right OU. It's it's in a sub OU of, of of all this, so it will be applied. It will work. Okay. Yep. It says some policies changed. Do you want to log off? So yep. Log back in. And so I'm not sure why it didn't get applied again. So along with some of the other videos I've done, we had to do some troubleshooting right here on the fly. Okay, doing some thinking here and thinking back, I think I know why it did not map it. I think it's because we used a local path here. And if I'm remembering correctly, the computer here is trying to access this file locally. So let's let's try this. Let's edit this. Let's go um, browse and let's go back to back to South Town. Net logon and let's find this. Oops. Ah, if I can type right. So let's put that path. Log off. And we'll log back in. See if it pulls it down this time. Yep, there it is. So that's why. Dumb mistake on my part, and uh, it's okay. It's how we learn, right? Okay, so now the map, the drive is mapped. Let's go ahead and check out the other version, the other way. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove this policy. Let's delete it, map drives, we're going to delete. All right, so that policy is removed. Let's go ahead and disconnect this thing. All right, so we have no, no shared drive now. So back over here, let's create a new policy. I'm gonna call this new map drives. Hit okay. Now, what we want to do is go to user under the edit. So we're going to go because it's still determined by the user. We're going to go to preferences. Oops, sorry about that. And then Windows settings and drive maps. So we can actually create all our drive mapping right here instead of creating a script. So we're going to select new map drive and first thing you'll notice is here in the action you have four different things you can set up you can do a create replace update or delete what we're concerned with is the replace because every time we log on i wanted to replace any drive mappings with the new with this version you can update it but it'll update the current one which uh, i don't know i haven't used that i typically just would use replace location Okay, so this is going to be the location of the shared folder, which is backslash 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 stdc-1, and it's going to be shared docs, right, I believe, or we can browse to it. We're just going to do that. Label as, what if we label this as, let's call it cool shared docs. Let's see what happens. I'm not concerned with the reconnect at log on because it's going to run, run this script anyways. The drive letter, what I want to use, let's use let's use O for like O, you know, for O. Uh, we're not going to use any different credentials and we'll just leave all this default. So, and there is some really cool stuff you could do in this common tab under like item level targeting, but that's a whole other topic. We do use a little bit of that at our at, where I work and I do have some set up here at home and a school district that I work I do some side work for but that's another topic but just know that it's there so we're gonna go ahead and apply this or okay it so one of our drive mappings is gonna be the O drive point right there to that shared docs so let's go ahead and log off and log on to this thing let's just do a GP update force real quick and um, apply these settings We'll restart, or we'll actually log off and just log back in. There's no need to restart since it's a user-specific. It's a user-specific policy. 
and it even notices it so let's hit yes enter Oops. log back into this thing and we should have an O drive okay okay start computer and now we have a cool shared docs drive now that's pretty simple if you ask me and if I had a preference I would go this route um, but you know a lot of people still use the the batch scripting which is also powerful in itself um, a lot of people use VBS scripts or VB scripts and you can do logging and all kinds of other stuff but uh, for the most part for most people this would actually do the job uh, I'm going to say that this is probably it for our log on scripts. It's, it's, it's already kind of a long video. And, um, you know, there's going to be, I'll probably do a couple more videos on like log off scripts and, and some other things. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And like it if you liked it. And please share it or save it as a favorite.